My soul proclaims the greatness, the greatness of the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has loved with mercy. Well, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our Sunday morning service on this Sunday, the 27th of September, which is the 16th Sunday after Trinity. I hope you are all well, and it is wonderful to welcome you all to our service here in Milton Abbott Church on this Sunday morning. Our service will begin on page 12 of our usual order of service. And before we begin, shall we just pause as we bring our hopes, our concerns and our worries before God this morning. Jesus challenges the religious authorities of his day in his words and in his teaching. This is uncomfortable reading for those of us who like to stay hidden and prefer not to raise our voices. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We have come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God now together, across the miles yet joined. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, shall we now join in together as we sing our first hymn. As we come back again together this morning, 
We remember that Jesus is the name at which every knee shall bend, on heaven and on earth and under the earth. Let us now bow before him in prayer and penitence. So in the light of Jesus and in a moment of silence, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. We say together, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. Our first reading this morning is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself, and being obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in earth and in heaven and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, shall we now sing our second hymn this morning?
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not, but later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him even after you saw it. You did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the end of a very famous film that was released in 1988, called The Working Girl, the hard-working and put-upon secretary Tess McGill was rudely and rather publicly dismissed by her boss. Her boss was Catherine Parker. Now, Catherine had already stolen Tess's rather ingenious business idea, and she is now pretending to a rather important client that it was her own idea and that Tess is not even worth his notice. Now the client thankfully has suspicions about what has really happened and challenges Catherine in front of her colleagues to explain the genesis of her idea. Well, she is unable to do so and the client humbles her and sends her on her way before congratulating Tess and offering her job. Now this is the climax of the film, when the underrated, undervalued character gets her time to shine. But it is also the moment when the proud, privileged Catherine, who has taken her position for granted and trodden over people like Tess to reach the top, well, she suddenly has a taste of her own medicine. In a simple, gentle, but effective way, she is exposed for a rather arrogant behaviour. As the character leaves the scene, we might wonder whether she went away and thought again about how she had treated those whom she considered to be beneath her. Now, I'm sure we know from reading the Bible that Jesus is not always sweetness and light. Sometimes his actions are direct and his teaching is rather pointed. Here we have an exchange with his critics and a parable demonstrating that he can be rather sharp when the need arises. And to understand the passage set for today, we need to see it in context. Jesus has the day before entered Jerusalem riding on a donkey to the cheers and adulation of the crowds. The people have hailed him shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. 
After this, he enters the temple, the heart of the Jewish establishment, and he throws over the tables of the money changers. Well, he cures those who are sick, and the people proclaim him as the son of David again. The next day, as he approaches the temple, he curses a fruitless fig tree and it withers. He is, in other words, being proactive. The chief priests, entirely understandably, ask what authority he has to do these things. In response, Jesus is not impolite, but he is challenging. He has already criticised them for making it difficult for people to worship God and creating religious barriers in order to exclude. Now he demonstrates perfectly how to make faith difficult and how to make people feel unworthy, well, by turning the tables on them. Firstly, he sets them a question that is impossible for them to answer. And then he tells a parable that shows them in a poor light. The elders and chief priests are unable to answer his question and are revealed as less worthy of the kingdom of God than tax collectors and prostitutes. This, as we can imagine, doesn't win Jesus any favours, but it makes the point very well. Now, challenging people, especially those in authority as Jesus did, is never easy. There are many networks, power structures and assumptions that underline how our society operates. Sadly, we can't always see them. And even when we know that they are present, exposing them as unfair takes courage, commitment and bravery. It is far easier sometimes to keep our heads down or to grumble to our neighbours than to actually make a fuss. Jesus is provocative, but he is not rude. He simply invites the chief priests to have a taste of their own medicine, to feel as they have made others feel, ill at ease and a little inadequate. When matters of justice are concerned, when people are marginalised, belittled, or they face prejudice because of their status or background, then like Jesus, we should look to stand with them. We campaign, we raise money, we support those who are voiceless and those who are in need. But this is only part of what seeking justice is about. Challenge is also important. Asking awkward questions of those who have the power to make changes is crucial. Most of us find this more difficult. But in order that all God's children might have the opportunity to become the people that God wants them to be, then sometimes we need, like Jesus, to raise our heads and to call our leaders to account. Amen. Shall we now affirm our faith in Christ Jesus? We say together, Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Shall we now pray? Almighty and everlasting God, 
Make us new with contrite hearts. May we receive from you perfect forgiveness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for our bishops, Robert, Nick and Jackie, as they urge the Christian community to strive to forgive and love. Let us make forgiveness and mercy the style of our lives, so that many wars, troubles and suffering can be avoided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As UK unemployment rates rise, especially amongst young people, we pray this morning for better times ahead. Let the Holy Spirit instill hope and reassurance into the hearts and minds of the many people facing uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who find themselves desperately lonely, spending time away from relatives and loved ones. Heavenly Father, move us all to reach out in love to our community, to help those who are feeling abandoned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people up and down our country, trying to book a coronavirus test. We pray that the government and health authorities take appropriate steps for the good of all people to remedy the current situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church this morning and for all of the churches across our benefice. We pray that they may be a beacon of hope to people throughout our area. We pray that in our daily prayers and conversations, we all remain faithful to Christ's teaching, allowing us to become better Christians and role models, displaying his enduring love and compassion to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those in our community who we know to be sick at this time, whether in body, in mind, or in spirit. We pray especially for Jeff, Pete, Richard, Georgie, Graham, Margaret, Claudia, Steve, Mary Ann and Anne. We also pray for the residents and staff in Venn and Campbell Hay nursing homes. May you bless them and keep them safe. Heavenly Father, may all who seek comfort find healing and peace in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have passed this week. We pray for their families and friends who mourn. And we pray especially, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our collect for today. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, 
that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now say together the two prayers at the bottom of page 15. Faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Shall we say together the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. For God has said, I will not leave you or forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not be dismayed. Please God, we ask that we can meet together in church again soon. Amen. Well, shall we now sing our third and final hymn together. Let us pray. Over this coming week, as we wash our hands, wear face coverings and make space for others, my continuing prayer for you all will be that you will stay safe, stay well, 
stay connected and stay firm in your faith. Amen. Shall we now bow our heads as we pray for God's blessing upon us all. May God, who has highly exalted Jesus Christ, lift your hearts and raise your spirits, that you may live and love for the good of the kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and with all whom you love and pray for, now and forever. Amen. Our service is now ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. to myself what a wonderful world